You're listening to a DM podcast. Hi, I'm Nigel Marsh. To celebrate the fifth year anniversary of Five of My Life, we are releasing Five from the Vault, that being five of our most requested conversations. Enjoy episode 37 with the master storyteller that is Rob Carlton. We're moving on to your second choice. Ooh. And, and you have, uh, if I can pick up your bad language, f***ed with the format. Because you haven't chosen a book. You actors, you won't follow a brief. Oh. But I'm, I'm going to let you get away with it. Thanks. Because you've chosen a play, yeah. but it's a play that you've never seen, you've only read. That's right. Now, can, can I just, uh, the people who are listening to this, they need to know the quality of the play that you are uh, going to be talking about. Yeah. It was written in 1881, mm-hmm. and the... I got a number of reviews at the time that it was um, released. This is from the London Times, from yeah. the theatre critic of the, the time, the best theatre critic. Positively abominable, an open drain, a loathsome sore unbandaged, gross putrid indecorum, literary carry-on, crapulous stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So it didn't go down well to start with because it's about religion, venereal disease, incest and euthanasia, ghosts by Henrik Ibsen. Yeah, that's Tell right. me was about that, it. Was that review written in Victorian England? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. At the uh, time, it was very scandalous because it was about those things. Yeah. So I stand by my position. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Ghosts by Henrik Ibsen. I'm going to tell you a story. And the first part of it won't make me look great. I basically, and this is part of an ongoing uh, thing I've been thinking about lately, which is um, forums in which to tell stories, forums in which to acknowledge one's growth, um, forums in which we can acknowledge that we aren't born perfect and we're constantly striving to find some something. So I, I offer this story up Thank you. in that spirit. I was, again, an undergraduate. I was living at university. I was living at college um, and it was a victory dinner, big celebration. We won some sporting event. It was possibly the swimming uh, we'd won. I was on the team because I was was the high diver uh, for the team, not because I was any good. I was the only bloke at college that liked jumping off high things. (laughs) Um, Well, I think we can assume that uh, I didn't contribute to any of the points that my team accrued during the meet. Nevertheless, we were <laughs> celebrating as one. Uh, and later in the evening, a young uh, woman from the college uh, tapped me on the shoulder and said, um, how, how, how about you and I go and explore the wonders of our nethers um, in, a, in a private location, which I did. You know, this is terrific fun, great fun. So off I went, and you know, 19 year old, excited and happy and making sweet, sweet love. Uh, which was terrific, but it wasn't my girlfriend. So this was a time in my life where I had a girlfriend for the first time. She'd been away for all of a day. She was going away for the whole weekend, so you can understand how lonely I got, Nigel. She'd gone away for the whole weekend. I really liked this girl, this girl, but then I had this offer on the table over here and I took it. And, of course, I've woken up. And I just felt sick and it was terrible and I'd done the wrong thing and I knew I'd done the wrong thing and I felt bad and I felt horrible and I thought I have, and oh, and, and I hadn't uh, worn a condom. So there was all sorts of terrible ramifications and risks sort of playing out in my head. And I've gone, oh my God, this is, dis- this is terrible, terrible. And I really like my girlfriend, but I've really f- this up and I can't let her know and I certainly can't let her get, a, a, if I was to get a, some sort of disease because of the thing, but I can't, I can't have sex with my girlfriend. She's coming back tomorrow and I go, oh my God, I've got to make sure that I don't have any diseases. So I race up to the cross at the time and I was really worried because at that point to discover whether you had a non-specific urethritis or any kind of thing, they had to gouge basically. Yeah, they nice. put a thing down the eye of your body. Oh, terrible. And I go up there and I walk into the doctor and I'm a panicked white mess and I look at the person and I tell them what I've done. I confess. <laughs> I've done this. I've been a terrible boyfriend. Go, I'm a doctor, not a, a priest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And the doctor looked at me and with a sense of joy, told me that there was no way they could get any results for three weeks. So you're going to have to sit 
in your misery for at least that long and sent me out the door. And so I left there and I've gone, my God, I can't even get a test for three weeks. How am I going to not have sex with my girlfriend? So then I'm going home, excuse after excuse. I tell her that, I got this, I got that. I'm going through thousands running around in my head. I got this, I get that. I get back to my room that day and I'm going, oh my God, and I'm trying to think. And then suddenly I stop. You see, for the last two weeks, I'd been writing an essay on Henrik Ibsen's ghosts. And by God, as a passionate literary uh, student, I was writing that essay with every fibre of my being, you know, the kind of painful, nauseating undergraduate passion that (laughs) comes with an English literature student. And I was belting out this essay, Henrik Ibsen, he knew what was going on because ghosts at the very heart of it is an infidelity that's not been spoken truthfully about And then as a result towards the end, spoiler alert, it ends up with the potentiality of incest because the offspring don't know that they're related to them and they may find love in one another's arms as well as a mother potentially having to euthanize her syphilitic and syphilitic son. And as a student, I knew and I wrote in that essay that if we tell lies about the things we do, there is no end to the misery it can cause tomorrow, the next day, the year after that, and for generations to come. So I sat in that bedroom and I suddenly realised this guy who wrote this play 100 plus years ago had a message for me and it was the very, very first time that a piece of literature, a story entered into my life, into my body, into my heart, and change the direction of my action, which was when my girlfriend got back that weekend, she walked into my room and I looked at her and I broke down like the pathetic grub I was. And I said, this is what I have done. And I am sorry. Now, I'm not suggesting for an instant that I've got everything right since then. I'm not suggesting for a second that I've lived a, you know, a life where there hasn't been you know, various indiscretions, whatever it is since then, I'm certainly no, you know, extraordinary role model of behaviour. But to me, that play represents we can choose to engage in these questions, whether they be moral, ethical, whatever, or not. And that play was the thing that made it very real for me, that literature makes life less lonely because we can witness our failures, our failings, our vulnerabilities, as well as our great strengths through reading stories about us. That has to be one of the dead set best stories on Five My Life I've ever heard. And it sums up what this podcast is about. So thank you, mate, for taking it so seriously and preparing. I have to ask you how... <laughs> Did it play out? Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> she well, went, that's all right, got, Rob. Oh, you got it. Well, of course. This extraordinary woman. Now, we're friends to this day. Ah, okay. We're friends to this day. What I learned as that played out, of course, there was misery and heartache and, you know, the kind of sadness that only two 19-year-olds can produce. <laughs> but she forgave me in a way that I didn't, credit at the time. And by that I mean she never once used it against me. Uh, Did she stay with you? Yep. Yep. We had our ups and downs, but she stayed with me and we broke up many years later. She never once used it against me. Not even passively. Not even (laughs) while you did this for her. Yeah. Uh, And to this day... I don't know if I could do the same. Yeah. You know, you'd want to think you could. Uh, you know, and obviously, you know, with another girlfriend, I got cheated on and, oh, my God, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. how dare you? <laughs> but I then tried to use my girlfriend's behaviour as a model for my own. Right. And it was like, right, well, if we're going to press on and I want to stay with you in this situation, well, I've got to find actual forgiveness. Anyway, that was the first time I guess I witnessed actual forgiveness yeah. from someone rather than just lip service and a whole lot of passive aggressive behavior. So, but, but, but what an amazing story that a play, book, whatever, could have uh, an impact on how not so much you behaved, but your honesty in recounting that 
behaviour to people that you love. I think that's amazing. So from then on, you were sort of transparent. You didn't try and at that point, keep, yeah, keep yeah. things under the carpet. Very and- much so, very much so. And it was, um, and, and to be true, you know, I think that moment has governed, I mean, I think you know I'm an ambassador for the Dimmick's Children's Charities. We raise money for kids that can't afford their own books. Uh, I'm, pa- my, 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 I'm passionate about sharing stories and I'm passionate about literature. The one thing all young actors do when they come up to me and say, Rob, how can I be a young actor? I say two things. One, because they all go, oh, I'll get an agent, do this. No, 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 don't worry about that. I want you to think about two things. Are you engaged with your community theatre group or Australian Theatre for Young People or, you know, get a sense of theatre, Get it because then you'll discover whether you love examining text. And other than that, are you reading much? Right. Are you reading novels? You have just read, read, read widely. Um, because, yeah, I still, and, and, and I have no doubt it was because of that tawdry, tawdry incident <laughs> all those <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Hello, Five of My Life family. It's producer Mandy here. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt with the amazing Rob Carlton. We're giving you a taste of five of our most popular and surprising episodes to celebrate the fifth anniversary of this fabulous podcast with the unstoppable Nigel Marsh. So over the next five days, you can revisit these episodes and maybe even go back and listen to them in full. But as a valued member of our Five of My Life community, we have a small favour to ask. If you enjoy this podcast... Tell someone you know who likes to learn, who enjoys thinking, someone who wants to hear about the nuances of life and art and culture and the way that human stories can be deeply affecting and funny and sometimes deeply moving. Word of mouth is honestly the best way to let people know about this podcast and we'd really appreciate it. I dare say the person you recommend it to will as well. Thanks for listening and here's to another five years of Five of My Life.